Hello, poetry lovers and poetry curious. Today we're returning to the collected poems of William Carlos Williams, Volume 1, 1909 to 1939, edited by A. Walton Litz and Christopher McGowan. That information will be down in the description box as well, um, including the title of the poem, which today is Woman Walking. And if I can find that poem online somewhere, I'll link to it. And uh, there will be a link um, also to further information about William Carlos Williams, should you want to learn more about him. So, I'm just going to read this to you. Let me. I'm going to check ahead of time. What is my randomized poetry element that I need to focus on, and we'll talk about afterwards, is tone. So let's see, William Carlos Williams, this is Woman Walking. An oblique cloud of purple smoke across a milky silhouette of house sides and tiny trees, a little village that ends in a saw edge of mist-covered trees on a sheet of gray sky. To the right, jutting in, a dark crimson corner of roof. To the left, half a tree. What a blessing it is to see you in the street again, powerful woman, coming with swinging hunches, breasts straight forward, supple shoulders, full arms and strong. Soft hands, I felt them carrying the heavy basket. I might well see you oftener, and for a different reason than the fresh eggs you bring us so regularly. Yes, you, young as I, with bony brows, kind gray eyes, and a kind mouth, you walking out toward me from that dead hillside, I might well see you oftener. All right, so what do I like about this poem? I like the way this woman and the way he describes her is really strong. And the way she's not necessarily brighter than the surroundings, but there's something about her active, straightforward manner, uh, her vitality, essentially, that shifts his mood. You know, I even like that it's something as simple as seeing somebody familiar, that doing going about a very familiar chore can really brighten your day. So the tone, the tone shifts. So it starts out a little on the dull side, oblique cloud of, you know, purple smoke. Purple is bright until you add smoke to it. <laughs> and then there's a milky silhouette. Things are ill-defined, whether it's foggy or if it's only the smoke that's causing this. Um, you know, the sky is gray, so it's overcast. Um, you know, he, cr he creates a little bit of ominous mood toward the trees because he, he considers their profile as a saw edge, which means that there's not very much definition. So that's another aspect of the beginning of the poem, the first two stanzas, is everything is muted, smoked out. Um, you know, the corner of the roof is a dark crimson, not bright. And on one side, he only sees half a tree. Until he notices the woman. And then he begins that stanza with what a blessing it is. So he's very consciously shifting the tone of um, of the poem 
And I don't know that vitality is a mood, but he's... Can we say he is... It rouses him and probably arouses him as well. Because... Okay, so William Carlos Williams was a doctor. So it could be when he says, I might well see you oftener. Does that mean... And this is a phrase that I think... can be interpreted different ways because of the cultural context. I'm trying to think of... Oh, if, if my brain worked, I would remember there is there's a phrase that can be used in the North in the United States, and when you use it in the South, it pretty much means the opposite, <laughs> you know? So... Saying, I might well see you oftener, might mean I would, I would like to see you oftener. I would like, and it's funny that he uses oftener, because that's usually not how we say that, if we're saying it properly. We're, unless, again, this is a time period thing. Um, nowadays, we're more likely to say, or it's considered more correct to say, I might well see you more often. Um, so this might be a colloquialism of that area or of that time. I might well see you oftener. Might express a desire to see her more often out and about. He's a doctor. It might be that he is anticipating seeing her in um, his capacity as a doctor, because here it says, full, um, full arms and strong, soft hands, I felt them, uh, is in parentheses, that I felt them. It means that for some reason, he's had a reason to touch her hands before. Whether that's courtship, you know, I don't know, let me see. Let me see. So in this book, um, the poems are arranged according to the book they were first uh, published in. And so this would have been a book published in 1917. Let me see if I can quickly get, get on here and look up when was William Carlos Williams married. When did he get married? Oops. Is it gonna, let me see. He married her in 1912. Um. Florence, who I think that he called Flossie, I think. So could he be talking about her? Could this be a poem that he had been working on and it was from his single days? Or did he kind of have a roving eye in the early part of his married life? Or did he always have a roving eye? <laughs> um But he, I would say he definitely, that the mood turns admiring and at, at the very least admiring, if not desiring, in the second part of the poem. Um... I mean, he might even see her in the context of a dream because in the very last few lines, well, here, let me just read the last stanza again. Yes, you, young as I, with bony brows, with kind gray eyes and a kind mouth, you walking out toward me from that dead hillside, I might well see you oftener. So that is almost... Um, 
like someone emerging, someone pleasing, emerging out of the fog of a dream or something. All right, so that's why I like the poem and a little bit about the tone of the poem and how it shifts midway. Let's do yield survey here in regards to this poem and I need to change my glasses so I can't see the survey with the same glasses that I read with. All right, is this poem more thinking or actions or observations? It's observations to me, this one. I mean, well, he is observing her It, but he's describing her. I mean, yes, he describes something of her actions as she moves, but I'm going to call it observations. <clears throat> Is this poem more representative or abstract? I would say it's very representative, and I would call it pleasantly res representative. He's trying to convey a sense of beauty, even in the... Um, in the first part, where he's showing how ill-defined things are, milky si silhouettes and oblique clouds of purple smoke, it's not like he's trying to be terribly grim so much as he's casting a mood. Yep. Something, you know, everything is kind of ill-defined. Okay, what not which non-fiction category is this poem most similar to? <laughs> it's kind of funny. Um I mean it could be. Let's let's go to her description. Powerful woman coming with swinging haunches. You know what a funny phrase. You know, <laughs> swinging haunches. Breasts straight forward. Um a supple shoulders, full arms and strong, soft, soft hands, and then carrying the heavy basket with fresh eggs. Um, I was thinking science. It's an anatomy. It's an anatomy book. Um, or even sports because he's... She sounds like she's well and strong, full arms and strong. Uh, so, a book about um, an athlete. <laughs> Probably those who engage in shot put, women who engage in shot put or something. <laughs> um, let me see. It's, it's kind of funny when you... It's, in considering these things, I could see this being travel, like a travel memoir or travel book or something like that. You know, describing this instance when you see somebody that um, is very distinctly of that place and wanting to describe them carefully. But I think that's about it for... Nonfiction. Um, what fiction category is this poem most similar to? Romance, I think, is kind of the most obvious one. Um, trying to see if there's anything else. I'm just going to go with that. Romance. What musical category is this poem most similar to? It's really kind of, it's really kind of quiet. I mean, he's getting exciting, being very excited or being quite appreciative of how much this person's presence can transform the landscape. It's 
so I'm inclined actually towards orchestra or like a symphony where because of the fact that symphonies will often have no I can't even remember what they're called movements movements parts to them and so if I am trying to create a soundtrack for this I could hear the woodwinds <laughs> in the first part um, and then as to represent the woman emerging you know bringing in the strings and maybe some brass <laughs> something like that so I guess that's that's what I'm going to go with um, is this poem obvious subtle or does it leave you scratching your head well, I would say there's an aspect of it that's quite obvious. Um, but there is that phrase, I might well see you oftener, which is repeated twice, that I would say does leave me scratching my head. But not in a way that leaves me confused about the poem, um, but about the speaker's intent in saying that. It's not completely clear. And I think that the, the lack of clarity comes from me knowing a little bit too much about the poet. And then, like I said, I had to look it up. Well, is this, well, he's married? Is this, um, you know, because he's a doctor? Is that what he's talking about? He's had her hand before. Was that, what context was that in? Um She's clearly, because she brings him fresh, or them. Well, let me see. You bring us so regularly, the fresh eggs. Oh, wow. So that would indicate, that would lead me to think that um, he is married and she brings the eggs to the house. So yeah, I don't know. I don't know. I have to look up a biography of William Carlos Williams and see if there's any evidence of him not being faithful. Or if, like I said, he just has a wandering eye and never does anything but likes to contemplate it. Um, does this poem progress in a linear way or a discursive way? I would say it's quite linear. You know, he sets the scene and she walks right into it. And, you know, he just kind of shows his appreciation or his thinking about how much he enjoys seeing her. Um, and I would say pleasantly linear. I wouldn't say it's boring because he really piles it on when she enters. <laughs> and he doesn't wait too long for that entrance to occur. Um, so I would say it's pleasantly linear. Uh, what sort of art style is this poem most similar to? Um... Well, a portrait. Yeah, I guess I would have to, see, because that woman is the focus of it. But there's landscape around here. I would say a portrait or an illustration, but the focus is so much on the woman. I, I'll say a portrait. All right, in a word or brief phrase, what would you say is primarily being communicated by this poem? So I, I would just say how much just seeing someone in very simple terms, how Seeing someone um, and 
I'm trying to think of, it wouldn't be seeing just anyone, because if you saw somebody downcast, that wouldn't brighten your day. So, how seeing somebody who exudes vitality can brighten your day. You know, she's clearly um, attractive, but at the same time, attractive to him. He's not, you know, he's describing her physique. He's not describing, like, her facial beauty. He's not even describing her figure. Um he's kind of describing her power, powerful woman, her and her vitality. Um, and how that enlivens, you know, her surroundings as she, as she enters them. All right. So that's it. Woman walking by William Carlos Williams. Take care, everyone. Bye-bye.